Hi. Uh, so today uh, we will start a, a new module called uh, transformations and uh, uh, weighting to a correct model inadequacy. Uh, here is the content of this uh, module. Uh, it consists of uh, variance stabilizing transformations, transformations to linearize the model, uh, analytic models to select a transformation and finally, generalized and uh, weighted least square. So, uh, before I start uh, talking about this module, um, I want to talk about uh, the objective of this module. So, for this you know you first uh, recall the simple linear regression model uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon, where the epsilon is the error term. And uh, similarly, in the multiple linear regression model, uh, we have capital Y equal to uh, x beta plus epsilon. And while fitting the simple linear regression model or multiple linear regression model, uh, we make some assumptions. Uh, the first one is the error term uh, say epsilon i has expected value is equal to 0 and uh, variance is equal to sigma square and uh, they are uncorrelated. And also we assume that uh, this error terms epsilon i they follow uh, normal distribution. So, normal uh, with mean 0 and variance sigma square and uh, epsilon i are independent and identically distributed random variable. Uh, so, this normal assumption is particularly required uh, to uh, test several hypotheses on regression coefficients and, uh, and uh, also to find the confidence interval for the regression coefficients. Now, in the previous model uh, called model adequacy checking, uh, there we have studied different techniques to check whether the, the basic assumptions we made whether they are satisfied or not. And the purpose of this module is that if the basic basic assumptions are not satisfied, if the sum of the assumptions are violated, then how we can handle the situation. So, uh, here first we will uh, recall um, particularly that uh, residual plot uh, was very important to check uh, the basic, basic assumptions. And then uh, we will study in this uh, module how to, uh, how to handle the situation if, if some of the uh, basic assumptions are not satisfied. So, uh, first uh, let me recall the residual plot uh, which is a very important tool to check uh, whether the assumptions are correct or not. So, suppose you are given a set of observation y i x i. So, y i is the response variable and x i is the regressor variable and you are given n observations and then you know how to fit a simple linear regression model like this. So, y hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat into x. And once you have this fitted model, you can find the residual. The ith residual is 
y i minus y i hat. So, this is this y i is the uh, observed response and this is the estimated response and e i is the difference this is called the residual and this is also you know more specifically this is called uh, regular residual. Now, what is residual plot? Residual plot is the plot of residual e i against the fitted response y i hat. So, here is the scatter plot of the residuals against the fitted response and this is the line e equal to 0 and if you see the residuals are sort of centered about the line e equal to 0, then the model is a satisfactory model and here uh, this sort of plot you know suggests that the assumption variance sigma variance of epsilon is equal to sigma square is is satisfied. And now, uh, look at this uh, scatter plot here forget about these two lines. So, if you see uh, this is called the outward open funnel if you see the residuals here you can see the residual value increases as y i hat increases and and this is called outward open funnel and in this situation if this occurs then we sort of conclude that the constant variance assumption is not correct. So, we cannot assume that variance of epsilon i equal to sigma square for all i. So, this is not true and what actually happened here is that you know uh, here the variance of epsilon i increases as y increases. Now, instead of this outward open funnel it could be like you know uh, inward open funnel that means, uh, E i the residual decreases as y i hat increases. So, in that case also the constant variance uh, assumption is is not satisfied and in case of inward open funnel variance of epsilon i we say that variance of epsilon i decreases as y increases. And the other situation could be this is called double bow. So, here you see the scatter plot of the residual and this sort of scatter plot uh, occurs when y i is a proportion and uh, y i y is the response variable y is in between 0 and 1. So, this sort of scatter plot also indicates that uh, the constant variance assumption is violated. Okay. And here is the final uh, I mean the fourth uh, scatter plot See here this sort of scatter plot is called nonlinear and this sort of nonlinear scatter plot uh, indicates that the relationship between the response variable y and the regressor variable x is not linear. Okay. So, now uh, if you see that uh, using uh, the residual plot or some other technique you learn in, uh, in model adequacy checking, if you see that the model assumptions are violated, then generally we uh, spe specifically if, 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 if the constant variance assumption is violated, then we consider some transformation either on the response variable or in the regression variable to make the variance constant. Okay. So, 
the usual approach to deal with inequality of variance is to apply suitable transformation to the response variable or regressor variable. Okay. So, first uh, we will talk about uh, the variance uh, stabilizing transformations. Okay. So, uh, what we assume is that variance of epsilon is equal to sigma square. So, this is what called the constant variance assumption. Now, if the constant variance assumption is violated, the cause is often that the response variable Y does not follow a normal distribution. Okay, so let me take some example, say example one. Well, suppose the response variable y follows Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, then we know that expected value of y is equal to lambda and also variance of y is lambda. So, here you see that the variance of the response variable is, is a function of expectation. Okay. So, this is this is nothing but lambda is nothing but expectation of y. So, in this case, what we have to do is that we take some transformation on the response variable to make this variance constant. Now, if you take the transformation say y prime, which is equal to root y. and then you regress y prime which is equal to root y on x. And you can check that 
uh, it's not difficult to check that variance of root y is independent of independent of mean lambda okay so the second example example 2 uh, suppose the response variable y is a proportion in between 0 to 1 and when y is a proportion between 0 and 1, we have seen in the residual plot that uh, uh, the residual plot sort of follow double bow pattern and here we take the transformation y hat y prime which is equal to sin inverse square root of y to make the variance of variance of the response variable constant well so uh, if you see that the uh, constant variance variance assumption is violated then in that case you know most likely that uh, the response variable is not from the normal distribution it follows some other distribution where the variance is a function of uh, mean and we have observed in 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 case of poisson distribution if the response variable y follows poisson distribution then the transformation we took is that y prime is equal to square root of y to make the variance uh, constant it is not difficult to check that variance of uh, y prime is sorry yeah variance of y prime which is equal to variance of square root of y is is constant and similarly in case of uh, uh, if 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 y is a proportion uh, between 0 and 1 then we take the transformation y prime is equal to uh, sin inverse square root of y. Now, the question is uh, how do you decide about this trans which transformation to take. Okay? So, uh, in this variance stabiliz uh, stabilizing transformation we will learn uh, this we will talk about how to decide on uh, which transformation to take to make the variance constant. Okay. So, y is response variable and y has mean mu and variance sigma square and the situation is that is that this variance sigma square is a function of mu g mu. So, that means, uh, variance of the response variable y is, is not constant it, it depends on uh, mean and now the question is, so in case of Poisson distribution the variance was equal to mean and in that case in case of Poisson distribution so g, this g is the is the identity identity function okay so depending on this g we'll try to find a transformation on y say call it f y such that the variance of f y is constant it does not depend on mu. Okay. So, how to find this transformation f 
on y, so that the variance of f y is is constant. Well, so you call it u, u equal to f y. Now, uh, let me talk about a Taylor series. Taylor series of a uh, real or a complex function say f x that is infinitely differentiable in a neighborhood of of a real or complex uh, number say a is f x equal to f a plus f prime a by 1 factorial x minus a plus f double prime this is the double derivative at a by 2 factorial into x minus a whole square like this. So, this Taylor series is, uh, is a polynomial approximation of the function f at a neighborhood of a point a. So, here we are looking for a transformation f on y and what we do we do not know what is this function. So, I mean we do not have the idea about what is this function at this moment. Uh, let me just uh, write using the Taylor series exp uh, expression uh, f x equal to f mu plus a prime mu by 1 factorial into y minus mu. So, I am considering Taylor series of f y up to the first term and this is in the neighborhood of mu. and I am ignoring the higher order terms. Now, we will calculate the variance of we want to make the variance of u constant. So, the variance of u which is equal to the variance of f y this is equal to a prime mu whole square into variance of y. I hope you know you understand that variance of this is equal to this quantity because, because variance of y minus mu is nothing but variance of y. Okay? And this variance of y is a function of mu. So, this one is equal to a prime mu whole square into g mu. Okay, I am replacing variance of y which is equal to g mu 
Now, if we choose the function, this function f such that f prime mu square is equal to 1 by g mu, then the variance is equal to 1. Okay, so, if you can choose a function f such that this is true, then you are done. So, this is equivalent to a prime mu is equal to g mu to the power of minus 2. Right? Then, if this is, if you can find a function f such that f prime mu is equal to this, because g, g mu is given, then, then variance of the transform random variable. So, we are looking for a transformation of y such that f y has constant variance, then variance of u, which is nothing but variance of f y is equal to 1. Okay. So, let me give one example to illustrate this uh, idea. Suppose, the variance of y sigma square is approximately or proportional to k mu time q. Okay, so, that means, what I am trying to say is that, uh, yeah, so the g mu is this quantity. So, g mu variance of sigma square variance of y, which is sigma square is a function of mu and that function is equal to k mu to the power of q. And what we want is that, so we want a prime y equal to g y to the power of minus 2. Okay. So, looking for a function f or transformation on y that is f such that this is true. So, this is equal to, so this then f prime y is proportional to mu to the power of minus q by 2. Yeah, let me check you know maybe I have made some mistake here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I made a mistake here. So this is this is so a prime mu is is to the power of minus half right so here it is to the power of minus half and this quantity so we want a 
transformation f such that this is true and from here oh sorry this is this is y. So, now you can check that f y is proportional to y to the power of 1 minus q by 2 if q is not equal to 2 because if you take the derivative of this one, you will get back this one and this log of y if q equal to 2. So, the here is the transformation. Okay. So, uh, what you see here is that if, if you see the response variable has variance sigma square which is a function of mu to the power of q which is a function of mu and the function is uh, mu to the power of q then the transformation you have to consider is this one. Okay. Now, I will talk about uh, several uh, commonly used transformations. Suppose, the relationship of sigma square and E y and the transformation here. Suppose, the relationship between variance and mean is this uh, sigma square is proportional to constant. Then you do not need to take any transformation, no transformation, because the constant variance assumption is satisfied here. Suppose, sigma square is proportional to expectation of y that is uh, the case where uh, y follows Poisson distribution and here you can check that mu uh, uh, the variance is proportional to mu that means q is equal to 1. So, you put q equal to 1 here right and then the transformation you have to take is f y, f y is equal to y to the power of half. So, that is root y square root of y. Now, if sigma square is proportional to expectation of y square then q is equal to 2 here. So, you put q equal to 2 here and then sorry q equal to 2 here and then f y is equal to log y and uh, this is the case when y follow follow y follows exponential distribution. This is the case of Y, y follows Poisson distribution. Now, if sigma square is proportional to expectation of y to the power of 3, then uh, q is equal to 3 and the transformation f y is equal to you can check that this is y to the power of minus half. Similarly, if x sigma square is proportional to expectation of y to the power of 4, then f y the transformation you have to take on y to make it 
constant variance is 1 by y. I mean uh, this is if, if, if the function g mu is of this form, you can find the transformation very easily, but suppose if sigma square is proportional to expectation of y uh, into 1 minus expectation of y. This is the case when you know uh, y is a proportion between 0 and 1. So, in this case f y is equal to sin inverse root y. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, the uh, this is all about uh, variance stabilizing transformation. So, uh, what is the basic message from this uh, technique is that if the constant variance assumption is violated, then most probability uh, the response variable is uh, response variable follows some dis, uh, some other distribution, not normal distribution, um, like Poisson distribution, or uh, it might be the proportion. And here we talked about uh, if the constant variant assumption is not correct, or if the assumption is violated, then uh, we learned about a technique how to transform the response variable to get constant variance. Okay. So, next uh, we will talk about uh, transformation to transformations to linearize the model. Okay, so, here what happened is that you know um, given a set of data one response variable and uh, one regressor variable or several regressor variable, uh, we assume a linear relationship between uh, the response variable and the regressor variable and the assumption of this uh, linear relationship is uh, just a uh, uh, starting point. Uh, you know, occasionally uh, this assumption uh, might not be uh, correct. Okay. So, if the relationship between response variable and the regressor variable is not linear, how to detect that? So, uh, the best technique to detect uh, or you know to uh, get some idea about the relationship between the response variable and the regressor variable is, is the scatter plot uh, of response variable and regressor variable or one can also go for the residual plot. Okay. So, we will talk about uh, several nonlinear relationship here and uh, there are some nonlinear relationship between the regressor variable and the response variable, uh, which can be uh, linearized uh, easily by using some suitable transformation. Okay. So, here uh, if the relationship between the uh, variable is between response variable and regressive variable is nonlinear. So, the nonlinearity may be detected by a scatter plot or residual. plot. Okay. Uh, let me give one example uh, like 
example 1, if the scatter plot of x of y on x suggest an exponential relationship between x and y, then the appropriate model would be model would be y equal to beta naught e to the power of x beta 1. Okay, so, what it says is that given a set of observation uh, say regressor variable and the response variable, you first find the scatter plot and if you see the scatter plot indicate sort of uh, suppose this is the scatter plot. Well, so if the scatter plot indicates that the relationship between y and x is exponential, then the appropriate model for this one is y equal to beta naught e to the power of x beta 1. Okay? And this is the scatter plot, this is the exponential relationship between y and x when beta 1 is greater than 0 and it could be like this also, this is also uh, suggest this also suggest uh, exponential relationship between response variable and regressor variable, but here beta 1 is uh, negative. And if the model is the, or the relationship between y and x is exponential, uh, then this model is in fact linear this model is linear because this is equivalent to the model log y equal to log beta naught plus beta 1 x. Okay. So, the transformation here, the transformation here you are taking is y prime equal to log y, that is all. So, so, the model uh, the final model is y prime equal to beta naught prime plus beta 1 x. Okay. So, uh, even if you see that the relationship is exponential between the response variable and regressor variable, then the appropriate model is this one and then you can transform this model to this model uh, to a linear model. So, here uh, given y x, you transform y to log y, log y and x and then you, then you fit a linear model using this data, in using this transform data. Okay? So, a function that can be linearized 
by using a suitable transformation is called linearizable transformation function is called linearizable function. So, there are some uh, functions which can be uh, linearized by using a suitable transformation very easily those are called uh, linearizable functions. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let me talk about some more example. Uh, so, you are given response variable and the regressor variable, you fit the scatter plot. So, if you see the scatter plot is sort of you know centered about the line. So, this is the line y equal to x, then you go for of course, you go for linear fitting, but if you see the scatter plot is centered about this curve or maybe the scatter plot is centered about this curve, then the relationship between response variable and regressor variable is sort of polynomial, it is not a linear relationship, it relationship is y equal to beta naught x to the power of beta 1. So, this one is the case when beta 1 is greater than 1, this is the case when beta 1 is equal to 1 and this is the case when beta 1 is less than 1, but greater than 0. Okay. So, as I told before, uh, there are uh, some nonlinear relationship which can be easily transformed into uh, linear uh, form, uh, these are called uh, uh, linearizable function. So, this, this one is also a linearizable transform uh, function, because uh, you can easily make it linear by taking log function log y is equal to log beta naught plus beta 1 log x. Okay. So, the transformation here you are choosing is the transformation are y prime is equal to log y and x prime is equal to log x and the final model is y prime is equal to beta naught prime plus beta 1 x prime. So, given the data y x you transform that at the given data to log y log x and then you can see you know if you plot the scatter plot for this transform data perhaps you will get the scatter plot uh, centered about a straight line and you can go for a linear fit. So, one more example is here. So, he, this is the scatter plot of y against x and if you see the scatter plot similar to this you know which is centered about this curve, then the relationship between y and x here is y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 log x for beta 1 greater than 0 and this one is same 
uh, this one is for beta 1 less than 0. Okay? And uh, it is it's very easy to uh, realize that this is a linearizable function because, uh, because here uh, you just take the transformation x prime equal to log x and then the model become y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x prime. So, given the data x y you transform that to log x y and fit this linear model. Okay? And I give one more example and then stop here. Suppose you scatter plot is centered about this curve or this curve okay? then the relationship between y and x is again a linearizable function here y is equal to x by beta naught x minus beta 1 and this one is for beta 1 greater than 0 and this one is for beta 1 less than 0 and you can transform this to uh, linear function because uh, yes you can take uh, say what is 1 by y 1 by y is equal to beta naught x minus beta 1 by x and so here 1 by y is equal to beta naught minus beta 1 by x. So, what transformation you are taking here is that transformation is y prime equal to 1 by y and x prime is equal to 1 by x and the final model is y prime equal to beta naught minus beta 1 x prime. So, what you have to do is that given the data x y if you see the scatter plot is, is similar to this one then you take the transformation 1 by x transform data 1 by x 1 by y and fit a straight uh, model. Okay? So, this is uh, what uh, uh, we want to mean by um, linearizable function. So, if you see the relationship between um, the response variable and the regressor variable is not linear and if it is similar to one of uh, this thing, uh, you can take some easy transformation on the variable and then, uh, then the problem is equivalent to fitting a linear model between the response variable and regressor variable. So, thank you for your attention.